hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is jemima today we are going to an entirely different series today's advice is for everyone who is studying medicine as a second degree or those who want to study medicine as a second degree especially those who got mbbs admission or who are about to get mbbs admission at age 25 and above believe me i've been there and i wouldn't say it was an entirely pleasant experience but i've learned a lot of lessons so far that i would like to share with you guys without further ado let's get started the first thing i'm going to tell you is oh my god congratulations it's a heroic act it's not something that everyone does i mean it's not easy to study in the university for four years five years and still decide to come back for another six years plus x note the plus x because i mean if you're studying that medicine in a public university as to strike is the order of the day and it will be the order of the day so it's something that you should put into consideration of course you should be prepared for whatever will come along the way so with that said the first thing i'm going to tell you is be sure of your motivation okay be sure of what is bringing you back to medical school be sure of what is bringing you back to school don't just take that kind of decision because everyone is taking it make it your own even though someone else is your motivation make that decision your own because believe me there will be times when you will question yourself over and over again there will be times when you will ask yourself why at all you made that decision to come back so make sure that if you're coming back to read medicine it is a decision that you have made on your own have a strong motivation because that is what is going to keep you going when the going gets tough another thing i'm going to tell you is yes i know many or even most of your classmates will be four years five years six seven eight nine ten twenty years even older than you but you have to be humble okay you can't go through medical school successfully if you are proud be teachable have a teachable spirit because you can learn from anybody the next thing i'm going to tell you that helped me so much is that i would advise that you take your younger classmates as your siblings don't relate with them in a derogatory manner be nice to them help them out when necessary listen to them because many of them will look up to you as their big bro or big sis offer advice when necessary and be approachable coming back to medical school has given me a great opportunity to be a mentor to many of my younger ones and if you can be approachable trust me you will touch a lot of lives throughout your six years in medical school so please don't be unnecessarily rude to them just because they are younger than you i mean no 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 relate with them like you will relate with your younger siblings one more thing i'm going to tell you is oh my god you need to be prepared prepared to work alone so many times when i got admission newly i found it difficult really vibing with someone because most of my classmates are really young most of them are five years four years six seven eight nine years younger than me so sometimes you may actually find it difficult vibing with someone you may find it difficult finding someone who is way younger than you but has that mature mind and in a time like this i mean you don't necessarily need to have really close friends just have acquaintances people that can cover up for you people that you can look after people that you can cover up for as well so you don't necessarily have to go so close because i personally till now i've not seen anybody in my class that i would say is my age mate or my age bracket that i would be able to vibe with like that so you have survived so far and trust me you will be able to survive you need to come down to their level you know many of them will be teenagers understand that they are teenagers and they are supposed to think like teenagers don't expect that they will grow up so fast understand that this is their time so when someone comes meeting you that oh her boyfriend is telling you this or his girlfriend is telling you this be understandable i mean you dated too when you were their age and even if you didn't date when you were their age this is the time this is the season this is a different generation so don't come telling them hey you're not supposed to be dating at this age nah 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 just vibe with them offer help to them offer advice to them but don't expect that anyone will be so close to you because there are some mature kind of conversations that you cannot just have with them one more thing i'm going to tell you is oh my god you need to prepare to be insulted by people your age or people young than you ah well i've had my fair share of it especially with my small body so many people really do not know that i am as old as i am so so they may tend to talk to you anyhow they may tend to insult you don't just take it to heart just let it slide like i can remember in my hundred level a lecturer was talking and he was like i know many of you here are not even up to 18 most of you are 16 17 18 19 and i was sitting in front and he pointed at me and he was like like this one sitting down here i know she's just 16 if she wants to be old she's 18 in my mind i was like really 
I was actually 24 turning 25 at the time he made that statement and I just smiled. I didn't take offense actually. So you should be prepared for statements like that. The worst is even when you go to the hospital. People that are younger than you, people that are your age mean to be resident doctors and you will need and have to be answerable to them. They will ask you questions and they will make certain snarky comments to you. It's the part of life my dear, you have to get used to it. Don't just take it to heart. Just know that it comes with the decision that you made to come back to do a second degree. This next advice is particularly for those who are married god it's going to be tough especially if you have kids my god it is not going to be easy at all you need to be prepared you need to have a strong support system to be able to survive through the six years of medical school if you're married especially if you have kids if you've not seen my video on how i combine a romantic relationship in medical school i'll put the link up for you so i'll tell you my own experience and have been able to manage with my relationship while still in medical school you just have to choose your school wisely if you're married and you choose a school that is in the same city with your husband and your kids be prepared for the distress there will be a lot of distractions be prepared for it and at the same time if you're married with children and you choose a school that is far away from your family oh you just have to be prepared to travel a lot during holidays or weekends there will be a lot of compromise that will need to happen just be prepared for it one more thing i'd like to tell you is that if you're in a public university you really have to be prepared for the delay there will be a lot of delay because of ASU strike and some internal strikes and all that so if you can't go to a private university but if you really cannot then just be prepared like for example I already know that I'll be way past 30 by the time I'm done with medical school, done with housemanship and all that. It's just something that I have in mind. So I cannot feel bad over it because it's something that I should have thought of before I made that decision. So just keep in mind that there'll be a lot of delays. Don't just plan your life for six years because <laughs> except you are in a private university or certain state universities, that six years cannot and never be six years. <laughs> Another thing you should have in mind is your fees. Okay, I know now you've done your first degree, you're now getting into a second degree. Who is going to pay your fees? In my own situation, my dad actually offered to still pay my fees after training me through my first degree and still seeing me through NYSC. So if you're blessed enough that you have parents that can pay your fees, you are blessed. Or if you have a husband or in-laws that are ready to pay your fees, you are blessed. But be prepared for the challenges that comes with whoever is paying your fees. Because if it's your dad or your parents that's paying your fee, be prepared for statements like, ah, when am I going? to have grandchildren uh, at your age i'm not supposed to still be paying bills or if you're being trained by your husband or your in-laws be prepared for a day when you may do something and they'll tell you hey, after all we trained you to become a doctor we are not praying that our parents will say such words to us we are not praying that our in-laws will say such words to us or our husbands will say such words to us but you should just prepare for the worst and expect the best so just be prepared for probably a day that they will blot out such words out of anger be prepared for it so that it will not take you like a shocker <laughs> because right now it may seem like ah oh, they are very excited they may praise you and all that but you may really never know what goes on in their minds be prepared for it another thing i'm going to tell you is no matter how old you are you have to give respect to everybody even the youngest person in your class deserves respect from you even though your lecturer is 20 years younger than you even though your consultant or your resident doctor is 1 million years younger than you you just have to give respect to them one more thing i'm going to tell you is that you need strong backup you need people who understand you need you need friends and family that will understand you especially if you are married you will need people to take care of your children when you are in school or when you have to study for an exam or when you are on call you will need your husband to be understanding when you cannot be home to cook for him there are so many things that you can actually do like probably prepare meals ahead of time and keep them in the freezer so that your husband can always use the microwave you can actually hire a nanny of course but this is a very tricky situation because it's a very dangerous time that we are living in so you need to know who you keep your children with if you're blessed enough that your family or your in-laws are staying in the same city with you and your kids then you may decide to drop your children with them but there are so many things that you actually need to do and you cannot do those things if you don't have a strong support system your husband needs to understand your in-laws need to understand your family need to understand that there are so many family programs so many family activities that you will be absent for you just generally need an understanding family and understanding group of friends for those who do not know i have a full playlist for you guys to watch in case you need to see more by tomorrow the part two of this video will be out i am your girl jemima bye